with you today um, a little bit about some uh, experience I've had uh, with automating heritage reporting tasks with R. Um, I promise you this talk will not require a whole lot of brain power and will be short. Um, so a lot of the time I spend working on research uh, using computational methods to try and understand the archaeological record, doing a lot of agent-based modeling, doing a lot of data modeling, um, you know, lots of, you know, sitting in front of the computer, uh, but occasionally I have to put food on the table, and so I go out in the field and I do some digging for, uh, for uh, some heritage clients. And so um, <laughs> I just want to share with you a brief email. Uh, it's, it's, you know, possibly somewhat fictional, but based on reality uh, that I recently received. Um, okay. So that's me. After I've received this, uh, you know, re read this part of the email, that's me. We need them to all look like this. Uh, all right, fine. Okay. We have 247 sites. Oh no, it's going to be bad. And then, of course, the nail in the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this is where I end up by the end of the email. Um, the idea of we've got a lot of, and all of it's going to be in Excel spreadsheets, and there's going to be folders of photographs, and I'm going to have to sit and assemble 247 pages of documents through point and click, basically, you know, uh, copy and paste, you know, over and over and over again. There must be an easier way. Well, you know, we like to use tools like R, tools like Python, any number of other tools that we've got to do really fun things. Um, you know, with R, of course, a lot of the focus has been on data visualization, so we get some amazing tools for, for doing data visualization and lots of different uh, projects that we can, um, you know, explore. Lots of, fun, lots of fun, fun things to do with R, but we can also use R for that task for which computers were invented in the first place, which is doing really repetitive things over and over and over again. Um, and then this was an instance where I could put together just a little bit of code and not have to sit and do point and click 247 times, times however many items needed to go into it. Um, so I found this reporters package. Now, I know those of you who, who use R, I'm sure you are familiar with all kinds of documentation, document creation tools. I am as well. But of course, the stipulation in the email was it has to be a Word document. So I found this reporters package. It's basically made for creating Word documents in R. Um, you're adding images, tables, etc., and then you take it, you format it as you would a Word document, and then you output your Word document, and then there it is. And the advantage, from my perspective, was that I could, I can, I've got all of the relevant data in different files, and I can just combine them into a single format, like the client wants, and then output it. Um, so there's some helpful functions in the reporters package. Um, you know, the obvious one is the, is the one that creates the new document. Um, and then there's, you, have, you basically, if there's specific text you want in, you have to create pieces of text, um, which is basically just, you know, it's a string, um, or you can paste together some strings, or whatever you want to do. Um, but then you can format that as well, and that can that then you can store as a variable, or you can put it right into something like add paragraph, which will add the text into um, the document. And then you can do things like add images, and you could you know conceivably interface this with something like ggmap or any number of other tools that you might be using to create plots and, uh, you know, deal with spatial data and any number of other things. And then at the end of the, you know, you assembled your document, um, you want to just write the document and then there's the write doc uh, function. Uh, so the data looks a little something like this. We've got this Excel spreadsheet. We've got, you know, feature numbers, easting and northing. We've got actual measurements. Uh, we've got some comments. 
And then very helpful, somebody had actually gone through, um, all I had to do was create this um, table of trues and false. And I didn't really even have to do this. If I'd read the NA here, I could have just skipped it. But I just created a, uh, a you know, if there was text, um, if there was a photo, just give me the photo. Um, and then it tells me where the photo is. This is what somebody, somebody helped, some lowly student had done, which was really nice. Um, and so then you go to your reporter's package and there's basically three tasks that you need to do. First, you need to create the document with the header up top as the client has asked. And then task two is you're gonna populate the fields with data from the uh, data file, uh, import the image if it's available and add the caption. Um, and we want to be able to account for, if there's no photograph, then we're going to say no photo available. Uh, and then we insert a page break, start the process over again 247 times, and then save the document. So this is the um, code for task one. We load the uh, library, kind of create a, uh, we uh, read in the CSV file, um, from the table, and then since, and you know, I mean, it's really just literally, it's 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 strings. I'm not I'm not dealing with any kind of data analysis here. I'm really just creating a document, um, and then we uh, set some you know some base you know default options for fonts. Uh, we start adding in. Uh, we add in the, the uh, first line, which is the header, and then we begin our loop. And I've got a little, I've got a pointer up here. Yeah, I do. Does this the pointer work? Yeah. So all I'm doing is I'm just calling out to that table, getting column one, column two, column three, and I'm basically just filling in the the forms here. These slash t's are tabs because it's just trying to create a little space between them. Um, so I'm getting in the location with um, the. Uh, or the easting and the northing. Uh, this is the length, width, height. Just adding these in as, as separate paragraphs. And basically, it just gives you a new line um, to start from. Um, I use this area text here. Um, the only reason that I had to do it this way was because the text had a special character in it, which was the, um, uh, the, the squared symbol for meters squared. Um, and so I just had to assemble that text as a, as, a, as a different kind of thing here. And then add that in. I add in the comment from column eight. And then I look if uh, we've got in column nine, we know that the, uh, we, the image label says true. Then we go and we get the file, uh, the, the, the image file, and we add it. And if not, then, and, and then we paste in the caption here, which we actually know whether it was view, which direction it was viewed from, and then else we paste in uh, some text that says photo not available. Add a page break, and then we move on 247 times, and then at the end of it we output our document, and it looks something like this. All right, so here's our header. Here's all of our populated fields, our photo, our caption. Go on to the next page. That's all I got for you today.